All right, so what if I told you that somebody collided with me the other day? So I was minding my own business, somebody collided with me and they were moving with a velocity of 0.1 meters per second. Do you think I got hurt? You seem a little leery there, Kate. Why do you seem a little leery? Depends on how much they weigh. What I forgot to tell you is that the person that bumped into me was driving a semi at the time and they hit me with the semi doing 0.1 meters per second. So in this case, why did it matter that I told you they were driving a semi? The yeah, the momentum is bigger. So momentum, has, momentum here has two parts. This is linear momentum, by the way. We'll talk about angular momentum in another chapter, but this is linear momentum moving in a straight line. It has two components, not just about how fast you're going, it also involves your mass. So in this case, if I wanted to tackle somebody, so in this case, and Chris wanted to tackle somebody, so in this case, let's assume that Chris, one, he is more massive than me, and he's in better shape than me, so I'm gonna guess that he can run faster than I can as well. And therefore, Chris, at full speed compared to me at full speed, is gonna have greater momentum. So let's say the, the person we're trying to tackle is Adrian Peterson. So running, yeah, running, just like I don't know the cast of, of Grey's Anatomy, you don't know any NFL football players apparently, so. So he's running back for the uh, uh, Vikings, currently injured. So, but in this case, who's got a better chance, assuming our tackling techniques are similar, of taking him down? Chris does. Now, truth is, neither one of us probably have a really good chance of getting him down. He's, he's a world-class running back. But in this case, because Chris has more momentum at top speed than I do, he's going to have a better chance of uh, tackling him upon collision. Uh, so in this case, you should understand momentum is mass times velocity. They're both significant. The greater the mass, the greater the momentum, the greater the velocity, the greater momentum. Uh, we also talk about something called impulse for just a minute. So and when you give something, uh, uh, if you want to change its momentum, so it has to experience what we call an impulse. If we look here, it's on your handout there. We got F delta T equals the change in momentum here. So sometimes you'll see this written as F delta T equals the change in MV. Same diff, same diff. Uh, somebody give me the definition of acceleration. Yeah, change in velocity over change in time. If we rearrange this, what is the change in velocity equal to? Cool, Newton's second law is? F equals ma, if you rearrange that, what's acceleration equal to? F over m. I'm going to take that and substitute it in right there. So in this case, we'll get delta v equals F over m delta t, and I'll move the m up to the other side, and we get m delta v equals F delta t. And you can kind of see where this lovely equation comes from. So in this case, this assumes the mass itself is not changing. It's only, the momentum is only changing because of the velocity. And that's typically the kind of problem you'll see. But in principle, we could actually apply this more broadly because the mass could change as well. If, you know, you're running down the street and somebody cuts off your arm and you just keep running, you know, your momentum has changed as a result, as long as you've kept your velocity the same anyways. But usually it's your velocity that's changing to change an object's momentum, the kind of physics problems you're gonna be dealing with. So, but this combination of force times the time that that force is applied is called impulse. And an impulse is required to change the momentum of an object. Cool, so let's deal with a couple examples here. Number one. So we've got a pitcher. Pitcher's gonna throw a baseball with a velocity of 40 meters per second. This baseball weighs 1.0 kilograms. Cool, then you got a, a batter coming the other direction. So he probably should face the right direction first if he wants to hit this ball. So, but he's gonna take a swing at this ball and ever, anybody ever seen a foul ball go straight back after hitting the bat? That's what's gonna happen here. This ball's still gonna be traveling after making contact with the bat and we're told that it's still traveling with a velocity in the same direction of 25 meters per second. So you hit the ball. 
Correct. So you barely hit the ball. You didn't make good contact. You barely nicked it, so to speak, in this case. So essentially, all you really accomplished was to slow it down. Cool. So not, not great contact here. Uh, in this case, you've got a couple questions you're supposed to answer. So what is the momentum of the ball both before and after it is fouled off? So first of all, what's the momentum of the ball beforehand? Yeah, so in this case, we've got a mass of one kilogram. We've got a velocity 40 meters per second. And so that gets you a momentum of 40 watts. What's the SI unit for momentum? Yeah, there's no special unit for it. It's just kilograms, meters per second. So, but one thing you should realize, momentum is a vector quantity. It has both magnitude and direction. So this is the magnitude. The direction is just whatever direction it was heading here. I'm going to call it positive 40. The opposite direction would be negative 40, so on and so forth. So that's its momentum before it, it contacts the bat. But after it contacts the bat, what's its momentum at that point? Yeah. And in this case, 1.0 kilograms times 25 meters per second. It's going to get us a momentum of 25 kilogram meters per second. And now my question is, what is the, so what impulse did the bat have on the ball? So in this case, how am I expecting you to actually calculate this impulse the bat had on the ball? Well, the impulse is the same as what? Not the momentum, but the, the change in the momentum. And so in this case, I'm just asking you to get the change in momentum here, so delta P. And delta P is just simply equal to P final minus P initial, which in this case is 25 kilogram meters per second minus 40 kilogram meters per second, which is? Negative. Why is it negative? Yeah, in this case, it slowed down. The impulse was in the opposite direction of where the original momentum was going. Great. So can we still use this same equation if they gave us a change in time, five and four? Yeah, so notice if I told you how long the bat was in contact with the ball, then you could set this equal to F delta T and solve for the force. In fact, that's exactly what we'll do in the next problem with a different example. So that whole term is just the impulse? Yep. So whether you have F and delta T or whether you can calculate the change in momentum, either one is equal to the impulse. All right, question number two. We have a 50 gram tennis ball. Tennis player is gonna serve the ball traveling 40 meters per second in one direction. So, and our lovely opposing player is gonna hit the ball back with a velocity of 40 meters per second. So, and the two questions you're asked. First one is what is the change in momentum of the ball? And then finally, if the ball is in contact with the racket for 0 0.050 seconds, what average force was applied to the tennis ball? So the first question is just, what's the change in momentum? So in this case, what's the initial momentum of this ball? Uh, yeah. Careful. No, that's right, no, 200. It's in grams. Yeah, well, in, It wouldn't have been 200 anyways, by the way, right? <laughs> Because <laughs> 5 times 4 is 20, and then 2 zeros would be 2,000. Yeah. So it would have been 200 anyways. Two. But we've got to change some units here anyways. 50 grams, what's that in kilograms? Zero. Yeah. So we get 0 0.05 kilograms times 40 meters per second. And what do we get for a momentum here? Two. Two what? Two kilograms. Awesome. Two kilogram meters per second. So that's the initial momentum. What is the final momentum of this ball? Negative. Awesome. So if we're defining this direction as positive, then the other direction would be negative. We've got to remember that momentum here is a vector. So I'm going to put a big fat negative sign out front to give me direction. And so here we'll find out that the final momentum is negative two kilogram meters per second. And so in this case, what is the change in momentum equal to? Negative four. Yeah, so it's gonna be negative two minus two to get negative four kilogram meters per second. 
That's our change in momentum. And since that's our change in momentum, that's also our impulse. impulse. And so in this case, the second half of this question says, if the ball is in contact with the racket for 0 0.050 seconds, what average force was applied to the tennis ball? So here we'll have F delta T equals delta P. And so in this case, F times 0 0.050 seconds equals negative four kilogram meters per second. What do we get for a force there? Negative 80. Negative 80 what? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Why is it negative? Because it changed the direction. So, yeah, we, in this case, as, as it's drawn on the board, we define to the right as positive, to the left as negative, and the force his racket applied to the ball is definitely to the left, which we made negative. Great.